Um, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, solutions in the uh, watershed. Uh, actually, my job here is to talk about the projects that we are proposing as a part of a, a number of studies that we've completed that uh, we think will go a long way towards uh, uh, beginning the restoration of, of, uh, of the Wissa Hickman. Um, just one uh, study that was recently completed, uh, uh, we did this in, uh, with uh, a consulting firm, my friend Paul Berry, I don't know if Paul is here or not. But, uh, Excuse me? I'm taking notes for him. Oh, all right. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Paul's great. So uh, uh, we completed the, the 167 plan. I understand that uh, it is now under review by the uh, uh, the DEP and uh, the, the, the 167 plans focus primarily on new projects and redevelopment, although Dennis Brandon may not uh, completely agree with me, but um, for the most part, that's what we're looking at. So uh, uh, at least with the 167 plan, you're, 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 you're starting with uh, uh, new developments and imposing new stormwater requirements on them, so at least we're starting fresh. This plan was recently completed. I mentioned the uh, the issue about uh, peak rate controls and the problem of uh, 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 detention facilities releasing water at the wrong time and actually creating more problems. That's why we have management districts like this. Typically in the middle of a watershed you have your most stringent controls because uh, uh, that's the area of, of, of critical concern. Also with the uh, 167 plans, we have requirements that the first inch of runoff is captured and either infiltrated uh, or, or uh, perhaps uh, uh, captured in some other way, like a cistern. Uh, I think you're moving to an inch and a half, Chris. Uh, so uh, the, the bar is moving up. So uh, uh, look for that in the future as well. Uh, the other thing we did as a part of our 167 plan is we identified stormwater improvements. And we've got a list of them, over 350 uh, different improvements. These are ready, uh, teed up to go. We've priced them out for the most part. We're close, we think. And the next step is to try to get them funded. And uh, so uh, hopefully uh, uh, we at least uh, uh, raise the consciousness of what can be done and some of the projects uh, for the next step. Uh, we also recently completed a study of the Ambler area watersheds. Uh, and here's just a, a drill down of, uh, of, uh, of projects recommended for uh, that particular watershed. This is in uh, Amblerboro, Whitpain, and Upper Dublin townships. Uh, the uh, uh, low-lying fruit, if there is such thing as low-lying fruit, are the detention basins that already exist. Uh, we can do a lot with them to improve their functionality and uh, help with stormwater management uh, in uh, the watersheds. And uh, perhaps most important is the uh, uh, upstream Philadelphia cluster plan. Uh, Patrick talked about the William Penn program. Uh, this is the implementation plan that uh, was done for our cluster. Inside of the implementation plan are uh, various sub areas uh, uh, that are priority, phase one, phase two, with um, the similar array of projects that are, that are teed up and, and ready to go. All we need is money to do it. Fortunately, with uh, the William Penn program, uh, they, they help fund the uh, National Fish and Wildlife Initiative, which is uh, uh, going to be funding a number of, of on-the-ground projects. Our cluster submitted 14. Uh, we've got another 12 that are ready to go. Those are going to the Growing Greener program. I, I, I see my colleague here from DEP. So uh, uh, we're still packaging projects, working with, with the watershed coordinators and the various uh, in, our, in our cluster to uh, help develop these proposals. Uh, I, I mentioned the, the low-lying fruit. Uh, if there are any low-lying fruit, uh, I think we think the detention basins, making them into extended detention, uh, increasing their volume, uh, uh, naturalizing them where appropriate, uh, makes a whole lot of sense. These areas are already dedicated for stormwater. 
So uh, they're not as heavy of a lift that, as other sites. Uh, infiltration is a little bit tougher. A lot of uh, infiltration opportunities are located on, located on private land. So uh, here's where the price tag starts going up. And uh, that's where like a stormwater authority or some other funding mechanisms like the, the NIFWIP program or Growing Greater can help fund some of these projects. Here's a rain garden, uh, also infiltration at, at Villanova University. Uh, riparian buffers. Uh, we've lost so many of them over the years. The Wissahickon uh, has lost a lot of buffers. Uh, so uh, we need to restore them. And this is just a, a shot of what it takes to uh, restore a, a, a riparian buffer along many of our creeks. Uh, there are a whole host of uh, stormwater control measures. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about them, go to the uh, Center for Sustainable Communities or either Villanova Urban Stormwater Partnership. Uh, we have this program called the Temple Villanova Sustainable Stormwater Initiative. There are probably 200 different uh, stormwater control measures of various types, and, and you can go in there and look them up and, and learn a little bit more about uh, what's been done. So there is precedent outside the city, and there are a lot of projects out there to look at. Uh, stormwater PA has some great films on uh, on uh, stormwater, and uh, I encourage you to go to that site as well. And finally, let me just talk a little bit about uh, uh, floodplain management. Uh, this is still an issue. Uh, FEMA has uh, is trying to uh, 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 approve or adopt and enact some new floodplain uh, maps for uh, Montgomery County. Unfortunately, most of those maps are not based on uh, current models and current hydrology. We redid the, um, the models for this particular watershed as well as for the, uh, the Sandy Run for uh, Upper Dublin and, and Paul Leonard. And uh, as a result, uh, we have new floodplains uh, in those areas, but for many of the other communities, or all the other communities for that matter, uh, you're dealing with old hydrology. So most of the maps are nothing more than uh, digitizing of, of existing paper maps. So this needs to be done. It's a serious problem. And that's my contact information. And 